Good morning. Mesa police tell us that one person is dead, two others shot, taken to the hospital. Their condition unknown. Massive response by police in the overnight hours. Police tape here. Good morning. So this is what's left. We counted eight charred cars. The roof of this carport collapsed on top of them and the storage units you see behind pretty much destroyed. So across the alleyway right here, I just want to show you guys is this dash camera. If you have to bring them back here, who's bringing them back here? Because did you account for the fact that now people have to go get these ballots and bring them back yes. here and count? They put those out. They're working out here this morning, creating a perimeter so that if the winds do pick up, they have that burn area and the fire will not be able to spread. So about a thousand firefighters, we're going to see more coming in tomorrow. This is Buddy. He lives in the house behind us. And so, Buddy, you took video of the storm. It hit just about 615 last night. Walk us through what we're about to see here. Well, there's no doubt that the airline industry is suffering from a shortage of pilots and flight attendants. Frontier Airlines says when the weather turns in Arizona, one of the first things people do is head outside. Most people hit the trail. Fresh, delicious Polish bread made on location here at the A to Z Polish market in Surprise. Michael and his parents run the joint. You opened it less than a year ago. You're not just going to find sea life at Odyssey. Imagine getting up close and personal. Giving back in a big way, Paul, who is one of the owners of Anvil's Cache. Any kid who comes in here under 17 and makes this incredibly difficult basket. Scholarships will be provided with various forms of grants, so it's possible the student won't spend a penny on their education. And these scholarships are exclusive to Fresh Start clients. Anita Roman, Fox 10 News. We counted eight burned cars, everything under that carport in the storage units destroyed. Across the alley from that carport, the dash camera that captured the entire thing. You can see here that we have one individual walking towards the storage units here and she seems pretty intent on where she's going. She knows where she's going. She's not looking for any specific doors. Travis owns the truck with the camera. This is what he saw when he downloaded the video. The timestamp reads 2.10 a.m. You can see right here she starts the fire and then closes the door, walks away, makes a split decision to go back and check something, check the lock or something and then she walks away. Less than 15 minutes later, the carport, everything under and around it was engulfed in flames. Does anybody need any help? I heard a series of small pops. Initially, I thought it was gunfire, and then the small pops turned into larger, into eventually explosions, and that's when I got up, walked outside, saw the fire, and then right when I did that, I heard the firemen and the police coming. When Phoenix Fire arrived on scene, firefighters immediately started evacuating the entire single story complex and upgraded this to a second alarm fire. The fire was pretty intense, so it's just shocking. <gasps> also shocking to residents was the video captured by the truck's surveillance camera. There were flames like when they left it. Am I right in what I saw? This woman's car burned in the fire. To know that somebody intentionally did this, like it's, it's absolutely appalling. Travis handed the video over to investigators, and while his truck is damaged from the fire, he's grateful it didn't spread further. I want to be able to feel safe in my neighborhood, and, and I've lived here for about five years, and when I first moved here, things were great, and as, as time goes on, it, things are starting to get a little bit worse. And really, the only good news out here is the fact that no one was hurt in this fire. Anita Roman, Fox 10 News. Well, this is a flight that Kaya Armstrong spent months preparing for as a student at the Foundation for Blind Children, a journey of a lifetime. I've had to go through extensive ground school and in-flight training just to figure out all the ins and outs and all the details for all of it. Down the strut. Kaya Armstrong reaching for the stars. Friday morning, she took off from Falcon Field Airport in a small Cessna aircraft. They were able to get me a poster of the inside and an exact replica and I was able to braille it at home. And so I put it up on the wall or on the table and I just sit in front of it and practice for hours. It's not unusual to see a young woman pilot a plane, but it is rare for that pilot to be blind. 21 year old Armstrong lost her sight when she was 14. It was just like any other day. I'd gone out for a bike ride, which is what I always did, but I had to come back early because my vision got really blurry. And we found out the next day from doctors that I had an autoimmune disease. And fast forwarding to today, I've lost all of my peripheral and can only see a couple inches in front of my face. 
Fly for Sight was an idea that we came up with at Foundation for Blind Children. We do a lot of these challenge events to give our kids the chance to prove to the world they can do anything. And Kaya stepped up and said, let's do this and we're flying across the country. She's flying across the country. Mark Ashton, CEO of the Foundation for Blind Children, says this trip is proof that anything is possible. Tyler Sinclair, a pilot with Leopard Aviation, is Armstrong's guide. Well, Kaya's piloting, I will be um, just helping her navigate, helping her just basically keep the plane level. Um, she's actually really good at it. Um, so yeah, I just give her some small verbal cues, um, but she does most of the flying herself. I think the biggest message I want everyone, both sighted and blind, to take away from this is that we don't have limits. The only limits that we have are the ones that we've given ourselves. And I want everybody out there to just stop limiting themselves. The foundation will be following Kaya's journey until she reaches Washington, D.C. We'll have a link on our website fox10phoenix.com. In Mesa, Anita Roman, Fox 10 News. It was a hot day just like this one, July 9th. SRP employee Kristen Keim was doing her job at a canal just like this one when she saw the unthinkable. Eight yeah. o'clock in the morning, uh, up clearing moss. I looked across the canal, noticed the horse was in the water. He was blowing bubbles with his nose. I just thought he was in there cooling off. because Water master with Salt River Project, Kristen Keim, was checking the canal near Camelback and Horn Streets on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community when she noticed a horse standing in waist-deep water. Kime went on to check another portion of the canal. She came back four hours later and immediately knew something was wrong. I knew that I had to make sure he was okay. So walked across, approached him. He didn't respond, didn't move, wasn't scared. So I said, okay. I gotta see if I can get him out. A former cruise ship captain, Kine knew how to tie knots. She imitated a lasso she saw at rodeos growing up and roped the horse in and then called a colleague to help get the horse out. So we had a guardrail right along the edge of the canal with an equipment ramp that comes up. So we were probably a good 15 feet away from him. Me, we were able to grab a pole and kind of shimmy the horse's legs to get him to walk up the equipment ramp. Um, couldn't really figure out why he was stuck in the canal. Um, may have been mud. The, the moss is very slippery. He might have had trouble getting his footing. Um, we did notice that his knees were a little banged up, so maybe he fell in. Kai knew the very moment she saw that horse, she would do anything she needed to to save it. Anita Roman, Fox 10 News.